Okay, uh, so I was just about uh, to clean up the sound here of a... Uh, I just made a video, uh, but apparently I had the microphone on mute, so... Uh, no video, <laughs> no good, no good. So let's quit Audacity here and redo the whole thing. Uh, don't save this project. There. Alright. <clears throat> So in that video, I made I actually made this video here private in the video uh, during the recording there. But this video made it uh, got YouTube here. Okay, May twenty four. I uploaded this video on May twenty four, and it's called uh, "Critical Issue in I three WM Do Not Rise." Um, the reason I made it private is because I just watched this video and I. I felt the energy was uh, not good. I, I was uh, not in a good mood at all. And, and uh, I'm not hiding that in that video either. It, I, I kind of made this video because I was a bit uh, upset about uh, the, how I felt I3 uh, had uh, handled um, the four window rule uh, shenanigans. Whatever. If you watch this, you know what I'm talking about. If you didn't watch, watch this you didn't really miss anything I will explain what I said during this hour in about um, in one minute uh, maximum I can summarize this video because it was I was really repeating myself quite a lot in this video also it was not good so it's now private um, but I made that video on May 24 um, and we can see here on GitHub on i3as on the release page that on May 29, just a couple of days after that, I, I made a, a release on of i3as, and that is what I'm talking about in that video. That I had I felt I had spent so much time on this i3as update, and then I just had one single thing, one single issue I wanted to fix, and then I realized it was not it. I couldn't fix it because it was like an internal issue in i3 and I was really bummed out that uh, that uh, behavior had been introduced um, and I also was completely set that I could never fix this I have to modify the i3 source code and I was talking about making a fork of i3 just to fix that and stuff like that um, but I made this release on May 29 and I think it was on the same day, on the night I, I started to get an ID that I think I can fix that issue. I think I know, I think I know a way. Let's, let's experiment a, a bit. And in just a couple of days, in like three days, I had uh, uh, created a new script uh, that's called i3king, which is now part of um, i3as. And this was just released today, seven hours ago. Uh, this uh, Rules Royale uh, um, release of i3 uh, got uh, public and included in this is this new command here i3 king uh, which is of course uh, a window ruler <laughs> you can uh, tell by the name but i guess i should also briefly here explain um, or talk a bit about this release because i never made a video uh, <laughs> Uh, announcing this release or, or saying anything about it, but this is a massive release, the largest uh, update to i3s ever. I completely rewrote uh, the two uh, most complicated scripts, uh, i3 viswis and i3 fira. Um, the, the main um, main concern uh, was uh, fixing uh, i3 wiswis to to work correctly with multiple uh, active monitors and that was kind of tricky to get that working but i got it working and it works uh, and everything else just works better um, as a bonus because i rewrote the whole script uh, uh, and it's yeah it's it's just better uh, and uh, and it works on multiple monitors uh, maybe we should leave it at that. Um, i3 flip also uh, made a. Uh, I, I noticed there was an issue with i3 flip. So uh, when you flipped tabs uh, like this, and if you did it really fast, uh, there were some issue with that. Uh, that sometimes the, the the focus jumped out of the container and stuff like that. 
and the reason for that was that it was executing too fast so so uh, it started a new instance of i3 flip before the old one was uh, uh, finished uh, so I fixed that by adding a, a lock file that makes sure that, that you never execute two instances of, of i3flip at the same time. Because that messes, messes everything up, it will, yeah, whatever. Um, fix that. i3.4, complete rewrite, uh, here with the main focus of not using i3msg open. Uh, and this is, a, this is a very big deal actually, because i3msg open, let's see what happens if I do it here, I'm not sure. Yeah, it will probably be a floating window. Uh, not if I close this guy here. I3 MSG open. There. Now it created a empty window here. And and sometimes it looks like this. Sometimes it it uh, uh, you get an empty square in in your in your uh, uh, desktop. Maybe if I close this one, let's see how how that looks. Ah, that's that's right because I don't have a wallpaper. If I go to Workspace Two, <laughs> this is my this is how my wallpaper looks like. It's it's like a whatever, it doesn't work. Um, so i3 message open. That is uh, an undocumented feature of i3 message, and uh, i3 actually um, i3 actually uh, mentions in the documentation and stuff that. Uh, you shouldn't use this because it's it's undocumented and unsupported. Uh, this i3 message open. And I I have always been a bit nervous that they will someday just deprecate this command and that that would break my whole uh, uh, i3s suit here because I use this i3 message open for all kinds of devious. Uh, uh, dirt tax uh, or not devious but you know i use it uh, i have found ways to to make use of this uh, stupid uh, ghost windows as i call them uh, but the, they are not good uh, even if um, i can get them work uh, sometimes they do not work and they are uh, quite tricky to work with since they are literally uh, invisible windows and you don't want invisible windows lingering around you know it, it you can get all kinds of weird issues with them uh, if nothing else you, it, they will uh, cause some some strange flicker and stuff when you move them around and create them and, and things like that so in this version of i3 fira i i when I started working on this, I, I, I realized a, a method to do what I wanted to do without using this. And that kind of changed everything for me. So I uh, and, and uh, it, it have affected many other scripts uh, that also used i3 message open, for example, corn here. Um, so I don't use uh, those ghost windows at all uh, anywhere in, in i3 as now. And that's a very good thing. It, and it, it really makes a difference in, in the user experience uh, 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 thing. Um, also much cleaner code, easier to, to read, better, faster, smarter. Corn, nothing interesting, it's just better. Uh, it, it made a big difference. Uh, to this here, I3, I3, I think i3 message open caused the most issues with i3 corn and now those issues are gone. Um, i3 list, whatever, you got some new uh, keys here, the root container ID and the orientation of i3 fira is part of the i3 list output, whatever. i3 menu uh, added, um, changed some things there to make it uh, read very large uh, lists, like 10,000 lines or more. Uh, if you try to do that before this update, it, it uh, took a really long time, like 20 seconds or something with 10,000 10, lines. Uh, now it's just instant, uh, or kind of instant. It's it's fast, uh, not blazing fast as Rofi, because Rofi just opens it in like one millisecond. It's just here, here are your ten thousand lines. What what do you want? Uh, but it's this. Uh, it is almost as fast because the item menu uses Rofi. Uh, or Rofi is kind of the back front end for i3 menu or whatever. i3 menu is a wrapper around Rofi, but it was a bit embarrassing that it, uh, if you used i3 menu, you couldn't really open large files. And I, 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 I when I when I started using Rofi uh, instead of this because of this, I, I realized I have to fix that. So I did. That is fixed. 
not sure how many people are affected, but I uh, personally was affected because I, I, I had a, a, I often open a, a file with, with uh, I think it's 30,000 lines. Uh, so I needed to fix this. And of course, i3var doesn't use i3 message open either. I found a, a better uh, uh, way of, of placing those var marks, uh, whatever. Fast forward two months to today, when this Rules Royale was released. Uh, the new script, i3 King, excellent, great stuff. Uh, we'll talk, uh, that is what we will focus on in the, on, on this video, but I will quickly just skim over here. Um, just when I, uh, after I released this uh, Ghostbusted release, uh, someone made an issue here. Um, or it was even before, when I started working on it, uh, they knew I was working on this multi-monitor thing. Um, they actually wanted uh, um, to, to be able to force the old behavior that didn't move the focus out of the currently active workspace or monitor. Uh, in a multi-monitor uh, uh, setup. Uh, and that is a setting that has always been present in, in i3, in the normal i3 config. There is a setting you can do that is called focus wrapping. And if that is set to workspace, that is the behavior you get. Uh, the focus will not leave the currently active uh, workspace, at least not with the move commands, you know, move focus uh, or move focus commands. So focus left, focus right, whatever. Uh, so I, I added this. Uh, I, I actually think it's a good. It was a good issue and a good ID um, to to have an option to to force that behavior. So you you can just set that setting in i3 and i3 wiz wiz will respect that. And uh, the, that fix for i3 menu that read large uh, long lists actually created a new issue that made uh, empty lists uh, be treated as a list and th that uh, affected the layout of the menu and stuff like that. So I fixed that as well. i3 run. This is an uh, uh, interesting thing here. It's, it's um, related to uh, the new i3 king here. Uh, but i3 run, when you use i3 run to rename um, the class name or instance name of a window, i3 run will now uh, uh, quickly map and un or unmap and map. I should switch this because it's the other way around actually. It, it will unmap and map that window also. Um, and that will uh, make i3 believe it's a new window, even if it isn't. Uh, because, yeah, we, we get back to this, I think. Uh, but the, the star of the show here is uh, i3 king, of course, this new script here. Now, I, I am not sure, because I'm just making these videos here back to back. Uh, what have I said and what have I uh, not said, you know, in this one. But uh, in this video, what the real issue was, have I said this? I'm really sorry if I'm repeating it here now. But the issue I'm describing in this video is that uh, i3 had added um, some some weird thing uh, that made, if you put a window on the scratch pad, uh, which I do all the time, like uh, for instance, now, that window, the terminal window is uh, sent back and forth between the scratch pad. That is something I do all, all the time. Um, with the latest release of i3, i3.4.19, uh, there is a new behavior. When you send a window to the scratch pad, uh, it will trigger the four window rules. But uh, just as always with i3, uh, to be as inconsistent in the behavior as possible, it only triggers the rule uh, once after you have updated so and what that means is that this window i have a f had a four window rule uh, that said um, hey place this terminal here in the a container tile it and place it in the a container on the i3 figure workspace when it is created that was the rule so when that got triggered when i sent this to the scratch pad it meant that it would send that window back and place it in the a container the container I just had sent it away from and so sometimes nothing else happened it just uh, sent it back from the scratch pad and since the rule since that only happened once you know for each window I could just send it back and then everything was fine and it would work fine for the rest rest of the session or until I reloaded the config but sometimes it, it that caused weird issues uh, 
like it, it did this so fast so so it hadn't uh, adjusted the other i3 fira with things or whatever or if you had uh, like um, like a more complicated uh, uh, maybe this if you had something like this you know now i have like one window here and i have a bunch of tabs here um, and then if I would toggle this, meaning sending those guys to the scratchpad, that could get really weird. Then it started sending multiple windows back at the same time. It was bad. It was really bad. And it it is because they have changed something in i3. And what that m meant to me was that I couldn't use my four window rules. And I, I use them all the time, you know, I uh, to specify where I want my windows uh, placed. And all of those were like unreliable to use now with this behavior. And that is what bummed me out and caused me to, to make this video. Um, yeah, I must have said this in this video. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself here. So um, just after I uh, made the release there, uh, I figured out that, hey, maybe I, I should try this. And I started writing this i3 king, which is an external uh, uh, window ruler. So instead of writing your four window rules in, in the i3 config, you write them in an external file, an i3 king rule file, uh, and then you execute this i3 king command, and then uh, that will int instead uh, um, handle rules, and it will only trigger uh, 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 when a new window is created, not when a window property changes, not when a window is sent to the scratchpad, only when a new window is created or when it believes a new window is created. Uh, so let us uh, let me read this description. I will try to read it fast here. So i3 king will match all new windows against the rules defined in i3 king rule file. By default, it's in uh, home directory.config slash i3 king slash rules. If a rule matches the created window, the command associated with the rule will get passed to i3 message. The criteria so window can get matched against our uh, class, instance, title, window type. It is also possible to use global rules, which will match any windows, but each global rule uh, can have a blacklist with windows that will not trigger that global rule. Uh, a variant of the global rule is default rules, which works exactly like global rules, except they only get triggered if the window didn't match any normal normal in quotation mark uh, rules uh, regular global rules are normal and any other uh, rule is normal and everything that's not a default rule is normal uh, it will become very clear it sounds more complicated than it is uh, just like in the i3 config the set directive is available so you can make variables uh, two built-in magic variables are available in the config instance and class here's an example uh, in this example, we see a global rule here. So it's uh, declared like this, global, all caps. And then I have a backslash here. Then it's a class equals urxvt space instance equals htop, comma, backslash, instance equals uh, Firefox. New line, indented, title format, dollar instance. So do you understand what that rule will do? If not, I will explain it by reading the explanation. The above rule will set the title format to the instance name of all windows, except a Urex VT window with the instance name htop uh, and Firefox windows. I should really rewrite this because it's not good English. This whole sentence is a mess, but this rule would match any window. Any window will match this because it's a global rule, except these we accept windows that matches this uh, criteria here because this is like a blacklist to the global rule so if the window happens to have the class name urxvt and the instance htop so both of these have to match and you know urxvt instance htop that's a classic window if that that window will not match the global rule and also a window with the instance name Firefox, it will also not match, but any other window will match this global rule. And the command uh, is title underscore format dollar instance. And dollar instance will get uh, transformed uh, or expanded into the actual instance name of the window that triggered this rule. 
remember since this is global it could be any any window you know for example the simple screen recorder window here um, actually we can actually see the instance name here because I have this little script here so instance name simple screen recorder this would be uh, used as the title format for this window if, if this rule was active right that is basically it and then there are some uh, stupid options here you can use config uh, to, to sh have a different rule file and a verbose option is something we will look at the rest here is whatever you can of course find this on on the i3as wiki on the i3king page okay um let me show you some examples on how it works it's uh, it works fine this is my personal uh, rule file here um, let's see i think this is actually better yeah uh, and that is actually active here because no no it isn't active what i will do here now is uh, close this guy close this guy close this guy because too many rules uh, and then i will not delete that file i will delete this file and you can see the title bar here by the way dot config slash i3 king slash rules so so this is the actual default rule file here if i delete that and then i execute pay attention here now when i execute the i3 king command in this terminal it created the default rule file just as the wiki told us reload and there, i3king is now active. These uh, notify sends here are uh, they come from from um, from i3king because in the default this is not the default. Yeah, stupid sublime two because this is my config. Yeah, I think I might have. Press the wrong button there. Whoops. I3 king should create the rule file. Cancel this time then. Should look like this. Um, I, I think this is Sublime that is uh, playing tricks on me here. Uh, let's, let's close Sublime. Let's also change. Ah, let's also change project really quickly. I think that will solve it. Hopefully. Yeah. And now we lost all the folders. Um, great. I3 King, please. There it is. Uh, I3 config. King config. Wrong file. Delete. Maybe that was the reason there because it have had it in the king config. Nothing. Close. Come on now. Yes, yes. This is the default. This is the default config. Uh, sorry for that um, uh, confusion there, but uh, I'm pretty sure it is something with Sublime's uh, internal memory thought that this was the, the other stuff was the content of this file. Whatever. This is the default uh, um, configuration file that gets it, it automa automatically gets uh, uh, created uh, the first time you start i3 king. I will use simple syntax here so it's easier to see what's uh, a comment and what is a, a, a not a comment. But uh, even if this is difficult, uh, I have written down here that if the first non blank character is a sharp, the line is ignored. It's a comment. Blank lines are also ignored. Then we have a rule. The first rule here is uh, instance Firefox uh, and title equals window title pipe tab. Um, and every rule also needs a command. Mm, it's important. The commands need to be on one line and indented with white space. The commands are sent to i3message, so execute other commands. Uh, you need to use exec just as in the i3config for, 
for window rules, you know. So here we have the command exec and the good old no startup ID uh, option. And then the command here that we want to exec is notify send uh, with this string here, a Firefox window was created. Uh, I really don't like this writing this for everything I want to execute. So uh, that's why I also added the ability to add uh, the same kind of variables as you can do in the i3 config uh, and you declare them like this. You write set as the first word, no white space here, important, dollar, uh, and then the name of the variable and then the content of that variable. So for exa example, dollar $x will expand to exec no startup ID. Uh, but since uh, in this um, example example file here, every command is is this uh, exec no startup id uh, notify send. So I actually made a, a, a variable here called message or msg, uh, which have that uh, exec no startup id notify send. So that is what is used in the rest of the config here. Um, then we have a global rule. Uh, and this is just a global rule that will apply to all windows uh, and it will uh, message us here a new window was created. You can also create default rules, uh, works exactly like global rules except that they only triggers uh, when no other uh, or when uh, no normal rules have been triggered. Um, so this rule will actually never trigger because this rule will always trigger. So the default rule will never trigger because this is a normal uh, uh, rule. Whatever, a bit confusing, sorry. Uh, global rule declarations can be followed by uh, a rule. Uh, window matching such, windows matching such a rule will be ignored. Uh, meaning they will, uh, the global rule will ignore those windows or it gets tricky with the wording here, you know, it's more complicated, it sounds more complicated than it is. So global matches any, any window except class equals URXVT. So uh, any window except those that have the class name URXVT will print this is not a URXVT window. Uh, you can add, add multiple rules uh, for one command here and you group the different rules with a comma. So here we have class equals URXVT comma instance Firefox. And that means either a window uh, matching this or a window matching this will trigger this printing the string. This is a terminal or browser window. <clears throat> and you can also use commas for global rules. So here we have a global rule uh, matches anything except URXVT or instance Firefox. Hmm? Cool. Yes. Very nice. Uh, you can also use backslash uh, to, yeah, it works as expected, you know, you, to escape new lines. So uh, you can think of this as uh, one single uh, line, actually. Can we do this? Yes. And then, whoops, and then delete the backslash. So this is uh, the same thing as this backslash backslash escapes uh, a new line and that is why here it looks now like uh, the rules are indented but they aren't they are actually part of, of, of the same line as the global here uh, th that can maybe be confusing and difficult uh, to, to grasp for everyone I don't know but that is how it works uh, but remember that uh, the commands must be indented and here uh, the command is indented uh, and here it is actually indented four spaces. The other uh, commands are indented two spaces, but it's completely fine to do that here as well. If you wanted to do this, this is completely valid. Uh, and even this, and now it is actually less indented than these guys, but it's, yeah, I hope you get it. This on the other hand, it's not valid because no, there is no white space. So at least one white space character, be it a space or a tab, it doesn't matter. You can even mix the two. Um, if you want to execute multiple commands for the same rule, you just do exactly like you would in uh, the i3 config. You separate the commands with a semicolon or a comma if you know what you're doing. Uh, and if you want to, you can also use a backslash to um, continue uh, the command on a new line. So this is actually just one line. It is actually one.
command uh, when you think about it. Um, and that's about it. That's how it works. Let's uh, demonstrate this. And I think I want to do this. Yeah, there's one thing I want to change here. This is a typo. I will make an update here uh, immediately after I have uh, recorded this and published this video. I will make an update but I, because I noticed when I recorded uh, the previous video there that uh, th there are two things that doesn't work. This is one of them. We'll not talk about it. It's, it's just a typo. The other one, I'm not 100% sure what's going on, but I know I can fix it easily. No, not version. Not that. Uh, ver verbose. There. When you execute i 3 king with the verbose option, you can see now it prints a lot more uh, uh, um, stuff here. This first line, i 3 king start, uh, it, whatever. You, <laughs> it means it's it has started. Maybe I should remove that line. It's a bit unnecessary. Uh, but then we can see uh, a bunch of lines here, and these are actually all the rules uh, that are declared in this uh, file here, because what i3king does, it parses this uh, file, and then internally it creates, uh, it, it um, transforms the rules here into uh, strings looking like this. Um, so first, the first rule here, we can see, there it's a class is a wildcard, dot star. Instance is Firefox and title is a window pipe tab and that is matches the rule we have here. So that is what it does internally. The two dashes here, those are actually these global rules, global and default here, because when you have a rule looking like this without any criteria, that means that you don't want anything to match them which means that everything will trigger them because uh, global global rules uh, they are kind of inverted you know everything that matches a global rule should get, uh, not trigger that rule um, so that is why you want nothing to trigger a global or default rule that doesn't have a blacklist so i just use a hyphen here uh, for now uh, uh, um. But this global rule, on the other hand, uh, it, it actually have uh, a criteria, and that is what we see here. So uh, you, you cannot distinguish uh, one of these rules from the other ones in, in this output here. Uh, it just say class URXVT, and that is actually this global rule. But internally, it knows that this is a global rule, and it should get be yeah, treated like so. Um, moving on, we have uh, this guy here urxvt comma instance now we can see that we have first urxvt and instance is its own line the, just because these are belong to the same command and stuff like that it will still be two different rules internally and same thing here these are two new rules so that's why it's m more lines here than we have rules in in the file it feels like but actually we don't uh, and so on it's not that uh, much more to say about it when you uh, spawn a new window, like there, we spawned a terminal window, this guy. We can see uh, the notify send guys here, and it also prints a bunch of uh, useful information here. First you have window colon here, uh, this is the identifier for that newly created window. And here we can see urxt instance auto title bash window type unknown. No wildcards at all. And what, what, what uh, i3king does here um, in the background is that it takes this string and then it loops all the rules and matches uh, these rules uh, with regular expression. That means it only needs to do one test for each rule, even if there are multiple criteria like uh, both uh, class name and instance name and whatever. And it is quite efficient, definitely faster than I first uh, thought this would be. Um, then we see a list of all uh, rules that uh, matched uh, this uh, this window. And it matched this uh, uh, first global rule here. And here is the other bug here I have to fix. I don't know what's going on. But it matched the global rule. Um, should also match the default rule. Yeah, there's something something uh, weird going on here. 
Uh, and now it also say uh, tells us what that uh, rule that got matched, what, what the command uh, was. It also matched uh, two normal uh, rules here <coughs> for URXVT. Um, one of them saying that this is a terminal or browser window. This one, because we have URXVT or Firefox. Uh, so it matched that one, and that is that is considered a normal rule. It's not a default, it's not a global, this is a normal. Uh, but it also matches uh, this one here. This is a terminal window, semicolon, exec, no startup ID, uh, send uh, the instance name is dollar $instance. Um, and it's this one. Ah, in stays, that's why it didn't work there also. So this is how it should look. Um, but there is something uh, awkward here. It doesn't. It, it should also trigger uh, the default rule, and it also never execute these commands because that's the last block here in the output is execute. Because it uh, just because it matches a bunch of rules, it doesn't mean uh, that it will execute all of them. Um, it's actually only applies the default rules, but the default rule doesn't even show up here. It should should show up in this list. And this global rule, even if that default rule should should not get triggered, it should show up in the list here. And also this global rule is not triggered, even though it uh, shows up. So I ex suspecting that there is some mismatch there with that it believes this is a de default rule or something like that. Whatever. And also the weird thing is that it seems to work with other windows that is not terminal windows. So if I open this uh, simple screen recorder window, for example, that trigger here, a new window is created. That is that global, a new window is created. It also triggers the, the default rule, but it never executes. So, so this behaves as expected, but there is something wrong with the, ooh, we are not, no, 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 no. <laughs> I almost, almost closed the recording. <laughs> what an idiot. Um, and there we could also see that dialogue window that also uh, get, uh, uh, handled by i3 king so it handles really handles all windows um, even if there is something um, weird here uh, and it seems to be only when you create this uh, global and default rules that doesn't have any blacklist or, or whatever that that is when things get weird uh, with your xvt windows now for some reason but as far as i can see it, it seems to work uh, uh, fine uh, I would also like to do this since I fixed the typo here to show you what that is. So if I create a terminal window, look at this one here. The instance name is auto. It will automatically know that the instance name is auto of that window. Uh, we can open a different URXVT window like this guy. And there we can see the instance name is htop because it's a different uh, instance name. So it's like a magic dynamic uh, variable there. Uh, that will get translated to uh, whatever the instance name of the window that triggered uh, the rule is, you know. That can be very useful and can help you write a very compact rule file. So on that note, uh, I would like to do this. Close this guy and then uh, restore my personal rules here to i3 or i3 king rule guy. There, save that. <clears throat> and I would actually just like to explain here uh, the default rule, my motivation uh, behind that, because that, that's the last thing I added here to i3 King. And I'm so happy with how that turned out here. Uh, and uh, something I, I hadn't thought about at all, it, it almost happened by chance here, but it's uh, kind of cool. So now I start my, my uh, instance of i3 King. You can see I, I got a lot of rules. It's about 70 or 75 rules or something. This is the whole uh, rule file. Um, and now we can see if I open, for example, the simple screen recorder, it should now match this de this default rule. And I think you have guessed what my default rule does. It floats the window. Um, so now we got a floating window. It is floating, I promise you. Look. <laughs> it's just placed at the exact same place as the tabs. Um, open it again, and we can see. Uh, let's uh, examine the, the 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 output here. 
here is the identifier for a simple screen recorder. It matched uh, the default rule, floating enable, border normal two, and it will execute that. And it didn't match any other rule here in my file because there, uh, there is no rule. It, uh, it's enough with the default rule to make it floating. Um, can open htop, places itself in the A container here, also handled. Um, here it is. <clears throat> that rule, I was experimenting here, that's why it looks weird saying uh, caret h2 because I wanted to see that regular expressions uh, works. You do, if you use this, you don't have to write the whole whole uh, string, whatever. Um, window, um, uh, window htop, blah blah blah. We can see it matches the default rule as well, uh, floating enable. But it also matches this normal rule here with uh, instance h2 and here we can see it looks different here in uh, when it's tra translated so under the hood it, it actually changes this stuff into this stuff um, and that command is changing the title format into instance meaning htop and also uh, executing here exec no startup id i3 fira move a and here we can see it also uh, this output expands these variables uh, and that is declared here uh, so it moves it to uh, container a and it was this uh, that uh, gave me the id that i should add this uh, default criteria because originally i only had um, global rules and i was really happy with that as well you know Oh, reaching a, uh, global uh, because global rules is something you cannot really do in i3 especially not like this where with a blacklist and it gets really tricky to to set something like that up and i i had it set up in in my python ipc script but even there it was really messy uh, because you had to make uh, like different tests sometimes you wanted to test both the class and instance sometimes only the class and it yeah, it got weird. Here it's simple. Um, so let's restart it here and use this glo use global instead of um, default. Let's see if you can see any difference here uh, when I start htop. It is different. It is definitely different. Uh, because now we can see uh, it triggers the global rule, it triggers the normal rule, uh, but this time it actually executes the normal rule. Uh, or the global rule and the global rule is floating enable border 2 and then it moves it to uh, the a container and i realized that uh, or i realized i i thought i wonder if this will work because since i have rewritten um, i3 fira and like completely rewritten it and everything seems to work a lot better and and be like much more stable now I actually think that I don't need to have the windows floating because that that was kind of needed uh, before. Uh, otherwise, some sometimes it worked, but sometimes it didn't work uh, uh, to to place uh, windows in, in these i3 fira containers if if the window wasn't originally floating. Um, but that uh, if that doesn't matter anymore. You can, you don't have to have a floating window with i3 uh, fira to move it to a container. I think it, was, uh, it wasn't always uh, important, but it was important if you had something like this, so it needed to create the container and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I, al I always just did that, did that, and I had had something like this set up, and I have been having that for like four years or something, you know. Um, but I thought, wh what happens if I uh, don't float this window? So, so what I did was just changing this uh, global rule, adding htop to the blacklist here. To, to this rule. So class urxvt instance is either auto or htop. If that if it matches this, don't trigger this, meaning this. Um, so this is what I did. Open htop. Uh, pay attention now. It's much more uh, uh, lean and, and smooth because it doesn't get floating uh, before it gets placed here. Um, because how uh, uh, um, what actually happens when it gets floating you know is because i3 doesn't have a floating mode so uh, a window cannot really be floating initially it it have to be 
it is first tiled before it can be set floating by the rules. And this is true even for four window rules as well. Um, so first it's tiled, then the uh, global rule triggers and makes it floating, and then the i3 theta move uh, command triggers and makes it tiled again. So that's like a bouncing back and forth like that, you know. And that, that creates a, a little bit of a glitch, uh, uh, sketchy effect there. Uh, but now, when I don't float it, it's much more uh, smooth. And so it, 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 is a, it is a big difference, isn't it? Uh, and I, I realized this immediately when I add, added this, but then I also realized that, oh no, that means that if I want this for every other uh, i3 theta window, that means I have to add, add like every single window here <laughs> that triggers an i3 theta command needs to get added to, to the blacklist of this global rule. And I felt that that is, that is not fun to do. And that will also mean that I will have a global rule with a hundred line long blacklist and I have to maintain both the blacklist and the rule. It, it just gets it worse. I can't do that. There must be a way. And then I uh, thought, why not just have a default rule instead of a global rule? Works the same way. But if the window uh, matches a different criteria, just ignore the default rule. And that is how the default rule was born. And now I don't have to uh, make that blacklist. I can do it. everything just works. And it, it, it really makes a big difference. I'm, I'm so happy that it is, that this, um, not only did it solve uh, the issues with i3, it actually made things uh, better. And it feels quite a lot better, actually. I, I don't know, maybe I am a bit, uh, over hyping this now because I just figured this out but it it is a, a, a difference it is nice it is great I am happy good so that is what I want to say here uh, otherwise there's not so much to say about my configuration here it's um, really easy to work with this it shouldn't be a big deal to convert your your um, normal four window four window rules into this format and i have actually thought about maybe uh, writing a little script um, to um, extract the four window rules from your default i3 config file and then uh, uh, print them in a, in a format that that would be useful for i3 king um, it is almost exactly the same you know the only difference is that in i3 it would look like four window And then square brackets here and then this needs to be on the same line so so this this is a valid uh, i3 uh, i3 line except for this magic variable of course this wouldn't work but uh, other than that it's uh, the same thing basically but i thought i i always felt these square brackets are uh, confusing and annoying and especially how would that work with, with multiple rules like this? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, and we don't need square brackets. Um, and here, just here is a good example on how why this is useful. In i3 um, config, you can also use pipe like this to, to group, uh, group multiple criteria, uh, multiple instances here, for example, uh, to trigger uh, one, the same rule. But you cannot use this in that case, you know, because uh, you, you have to have the same instance. You cannot use variables in that way in, in i3, dynamic variables like here. Uh, and that would mean that in i3, this would have to be on three uh, different lines. Uh, and here it's uh, only yeah, one or two lines, depending on how you count it's or it's one uh, rule definition. Whatever, it's, you, can, you can get it a lot more compact uh, than with the i3 config and more readable in my opinion, but it's not that different. And this is not about the syntax, that is not why I did this. Uh, I did it because I wanted to have uh, the functionality that I have always had. And now I got that and it's even better. Both the default thing here and the global rule, uh, adding this blacklist, it made everything so much more convenient to set up more advanced patterns. It's like you don't even think about uh, what, what you actually do. It, it, it makes sense, in my opinion, at least. So, um, would be really cool if um, 
if you use i3, if you would uh, try this out, it, uh, I'm really interested in hearing uh, what people think about it. Uh, you can leave um, comments in, in the Bud Labs i3s uh, discussions forum here if you want to, or if you find an issue or have a feature request or whatever, it's a good place to post it in, in the issues here. But it's also completely fine, of course, to, to just leave a comment on, on, on this uh, YouTube video. Um, or if you don't want to use it at all, you don't care about this, that's also fine. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Bye, bye, bye.